I'm going to be honest with you guys. I love my Canes. I do. I do. But I'm a football head. I'm a football junkie. So I really don't get into baseball until they make it to Omaha, if they make it to Omaha. And then I'm tuned in. I'm live. Then I actually would like to go to Omaha if they make it this year. But I've gotten a couple DMs and requests uh, to talk about Canes baseball and I decided to do an instant reaction because the timeline was going crazy. Uh, Miami losing to Florida. I got a special guest com coming on. He's going to really talk to us and give us his opinion about Kane's baseball. He knows what he's talking about. His name's Mark. He'll do a good job. I got that interview coming for you. And I also wanted to let you know that the podcast will be out Friday where we're going to be discussing spring practice and whatever else comes up throughout the week. We got a couple guests lined up. But right now, let's get into this Canes versus Florida. Canes baseball, how can we improve? How can we get better? And what's next for them? All weekend, Florida versus Miami. And Miami, uh, unfortunately, lost all three games. I got my guy Mark here. Mark, how you doing today? I'm doing well, except for the Canes getting swept. But other than that, doing well. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Mark, and let the people know. I know you're a scout for Perfect Game USA, and uh, kind of tell them your background with baseball and, um, you know, why you're ex why you're an expert on the sport. Yeah, so I played for many years when I was three through high school. Um, been working for Perfect Game now since 2012, and also coaching high school down here in South Florida for seven years. So know a lot about the game and have either coached coach kids or coach against a lot of kids that play for the Canes or in the ACC and seen a lot of good players around the country in general. Okay. And I'm the opposite, Mark. I love my Canes. I love <laughs> uh, college football. I even keep up with the basketball team. I'm not a big baseball guy unless we make it to Omaha. So that's why I got you on to kind of uh, discuss what happened this weekend. And bottom line is we lose to the Gators. It's never a good time when we lose to the Gators, but not even, we're number one team in the nation. We don't even win one game. Uh, what's your just reaction to what happened this weekend? Right. Definitely disappointing to not to not even get one game, let alone not win the series. But I mean, really, Friday and Saturday, both games went to extra innings. Both games could have gone either way. Really, the biggest takeaway for me this weekend is just the Canes weren't able to get that big hit with a guy on base. You know, last year, the offense was really good. Um, losing shortstop Freddie Zamora for the whole season with a torn ACL is definitely a big blow to this team, I think, and that's something to watch going forward. Not having him in the lineup and in the field definitely hurts. But, I mean, it, it's early in the season. It's the second weekend, I, so I wouldn't panic just yet, but obviously frustrating that the Gators have had our number for many years now, and to not be able to get one game is is pretty tough to swallow. So do you think that number one ranking overall, do you think that kind of – do you think we're overrated? Because I feel like once we got that ranking, um, we started to get a little bit hyped because of that. Do you think we're overrated as a baseball team? I would say maybe slightly. I mean, to me, it's definitely a top five, top ten team. Um, again, losing Zamora is a pretty big blow. But they're they're definitely – a top five, top 10 team. I don't know about number one. Again, it's also tough after one series and a midweek game to, to judge, but based off the starting pitching they have and other bats in the lineup, they're definitely, every poll has got them in the top 10. I don't know if I can honestly tell you that they should have been number one, but they're definitely a top team in the country. So when you look at, you know, we lose our starting uh, shortstop, uh, shortstop for the people that don't follow baseball, kind of tell us, Losing him, what impact does that help? Does that have on this team? Oh, uh, um, it's it definitely hurts. I mean, he was a top top draft prospect to go top probably two three rounds if you know if not first round. Um, being a junior, so that's definitely a big loss. Amora was a great player, really good arm, you know, good fielder at short and hit. I think third for the team last year. So it's definitely it, it and it also it's it's a trickle down effect because Anthony Villar who should be the second baseman is really not a shortstop they got to play him at short and then Tyler Page who at least for this weekend who they put out there or last weekend and this weekend has started the year at second base he's just an okay player they got him hitting in the nine well he's solid defensively but really 
is more of a utility bench player as opposed to starting. But with the depth they have, that's what they got to go with. And so it'll be interesting to see going forward if they can pick up the slack for not having Zamora in there. After this weekend, what do you think is the Canes' biggest weakness on the team? I'd have to say hitting with runners in scoring position based on all the runners they left on base this weekend, not scoring very many runs. Uh, and again, Florida's got a really good pitching staff, as, as do the Canes. But the guys that Florida's rolling out there, for those that don't know, their Friday night guy, Tommy Mace, is also a, a pretty high draft prospect, could go late first, second round up to 96. Their Saturday guy, Jack Lefwich, 92-94, up to 95, also going to go pro- top five rounds. And then their pitcher today, Hunter Barco, was a perfect game All-American, was projected to go pretty high in the draft out of high school last year, didn't, you know, and now he's at Florida, who's, as a lefty, was 90-92, 93 today, so very good as well. So they're facing good arms. It's early again, but I'd have to say definitely hitting with runners in scoring position after this weekend. Some bullpen questions as well, but overall, um, I would say hitting. But again, it's early and got to let it play out and see, see what happens. Right. It is early in the season, uh, but you know how it is on Twitter. Kane's Twitter, to me, is the most, <laughs> it's the most entertaining thing in the world. And I'm seeing a lot of tweets. A lot of people are saying, you know, we can't close the deal. We can't win the big ones. Uh, we got a mindset of losing. All kind of crazy tweets. And then you have a couple people that are saying, don't count out this team yet. I know it's early, but where do you stand in it? I mean, did you see some warnings from this from this weekend that could linger on de- during the season? Do, or are you just chopping it up as it's early and we played a good Florida team? Uh, yeah, first off, definitely about Kane's Twitter. Yeah, follow you know during the football games especially, and then even e- even seeing some baseball stuff this weekend. Uh, it, it's always always uh, entertaining. But anyway, um, no, I, I still have high hopes for this team again. The, the Miami starting rotation is very good. Again, the Friday night guy, Brian Van Bell, has been excellent the first two outings. His belt against Rutgers and Florida on Friday. The one run he gave up Friday was on an error. And then the guys with the best stuff are the Saturday and Sunday guys. Chris McMahon was also excellent yesterday, you know, up to 96. And then today, Slade Sacconi up to 97. They both had really good stuff. Sacconi struggled a little with location today. A couple balls up. He got hurt a little bit. But the starting rotation is, is excellent, and that'll keep them in in, in every game. Um, you know, so again, it's just just the hitting, and it, so it's early. But it is a little concerning going forward with a lot of good pitchers that they'll be facing in ACC play. Um, but I, I still I still have high hopes for this team, and I, I think they can go far. All right, guys, we're talking about the Miami Hurricanes baseball team. Yeah, we got a lot of things coming this weekend or this week. We'll be talking about spring practice with the football team. But Miami uh, was number one coming into the week in baseball. So I decided to have my guy Mark come on to the show, give us this instant reaction, his input about the team and about why we got swept this weekend from the Gators. Mark, how would you evaluate Geno's performance uh, as the head baseball coach? Uh, kind of tell us some things that, you like that he did this weekend and some things that you maybe didn't agree with. Um, overall, I mean, I think there, I, I, there's a couple questionable decisions. I know um, last night I actually didn't see the game or wasn't there because I went to the heat game for Dwayne Wade's Jersey retirement. So just fo- I had to follow my phone yesterday. I was there Friday and today I know yesterday, I think he pinch hit for, for Tony Jenkins and some people were questioning it with Jared Thomas, the freshman who had struck out on three pitches um, and today, maybe one little thing later in the game. Um, I mean, JP Gates kind of looked bad swing and struck out against a lefty and he's a lefty. And then he pinch hit for him later in the game, but then the pinch hitter, Isaac, you know, struck out as well. I mean, o- overall, I don't really think he did a bad job for the most part. I mean, a couple things here and there, of course, but it's just a couple little things that cost you games in baseball. And again, more than anything, just leaving too many runners on base and not coming through offensively. All right. Uh, so you were at this last game, correct? Right. I was there today. Just got home a little while ago. Okay. How was the atmosphere um, this game? Because I know the first couple games, 
you know, I saw videos and things that looked pretty crazy, but I kind of figured after us losing those last two and extra innings, today would kind of die down. Kind of take the people through how the atmosphere was today. Yeah, today definitely Friday night the place was lit. I mean, it was it was a great atmosphere Friday. Today definitely not not the same being a day game and right, we already lost the first two games and we fell down early today, so it didn't help matters. But towards later in the game when Miami when Raymond Gill hit a home run to cut it to a one run game, they kind of got excited, but um, definitely today was not nearly what it was the other night, that's for sure. All right, all right. Who's Who's kind of the guy that's going to be the leader of this team, do you think, going forward? As in the best hitter or leader or? Just the overall best baseball player on this team. The best player is, and the best hitter especially, is definitely catcher Adrian Del Castillo. Um, He's a special hitter. Um, He's hitting around 500. I don't know what he's at right now after the weekend. A couple home runs. He's just a great, such a smart hitter. Um, Even when he strikes out. Very good at bats, doesn't give at bats away. He's going to be the best hitter on this team, no question, especially without Zamora in there. All right. And is there a player that you think that Miami's going to have to see more production from for us to win these series, like against the Florida Gators? I'd say Alex Terrell because he's a junior. This is his big year for the draft. He had a great year last year, hit a home run yesterday for a run, but that's a guy that. That's struggling, as are, as are a lot of the other hitters. But I think that he had a really good year, sophomore year last year. I think that's a guy with a lot of power that they need to step up for for them to have success. All right. Miami loses three straight to the Florida Gators. A lot of people are upset. You seem pretty positive, Mark, looking at the bright side of things. So kind of give a message to someone that's kind of riding golf or giving up on this baseball team. Right. It, it, again, it's frustrating, no doubt, when you get swept by Florida, especially after being ranked number one. And I said the Gators seem to be owning us in every sport lately, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, again, I, this team's talented. I'm not going to write them off, that's for sure. Again, with the starting pitching that they've got, they're going to be in every game. Uh, and generally early on in baseball, for those that don't know, the pitching is always ahead of the hitting it just seems to be that way. And it's not like Florida tore the cover off the ball either. Um, you know, it's, Miami could have easily won Friday and Saturday. It didn't happen. Friday, for those that didn't see it, a big uh, controversial interference call that would have given the Canes first and third with nobody out in the ninth inning to win the game. They call interference, overturned it, then gave up a run and extras to lose. And then yesterday, one strike away from winning the game. Just couldn't complete it. And Gators ended up taking it in extras again and even today you know it was 4-3 going to the ninth inning then Miami surrendered a run and lost by two so all the games were there for the taking you know so I I, I wouldn't panic at all just yet all right all right uh Mark I appreciate you coming on for this uh quick instant reaction to the Miami Hurricanes losing to the Gators on the Canes After Dark podcast go ahead and let the people know where they can find you on Twitter and what you got going on man yeah, you can get me at Twitter at, at Mark Ellenbogen, M-A-R-K-E-L-L-E-N-B-O-G-E-N. Always down to talk games, whether it's baseball, football. So now we uh, got baseball season going, spring football just about to start. So anything Canes related, I'm always up for. Okay, real quick while I got you on here, <laughs> uh, tell us some things you're excited about uh, with spring practice starting this weekend. I'd say definitely the offense with uh, Red huh? Lashley seeing what the new the new system's like and uh, and with De'Ara King at quarterback definitely excited to to get out there for some of the things they got open for the public. I mean that's obviously the uh, the flashy offseason acquisitions. So um, looking forward to seeing. Uh, I mean it can't get much worse than last year, even though I said that after last season <laughs> with, Thank you. With, Rick, with Rick, but. Listen, I said the same thing. I, I emphasized that. I said, no matter what the offense looked like, it can't get any worse. And uh, it did. I mean, this time <laughs> last year, we were talking about the infamous spread coast offense. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like in the spring. And obviously, if, if people go back to that spring, we actually saw three different styles of offense because of the different quarterbacks we have. But uh, I'm actually I'm excited to see what Rhett Lashley and De'Ara King um, is going to do and what they can do. do. 
Do you think this this year is going to be different than last year? I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, the defense should still be solid. Um, definitely some question marks at linebacker, but bringing McLeod back is huge. He's got the experience, and I, I liked what I saw from Sam Brooks in the in the bowl game. He, I think he led the team in tackles, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a couple months, but he, you know, he had that one personal foul or un, unsportsmanlike penalty, but the game was kind of over already. I know he's out for some or all of the spring, but I was encouraged from him. So some linebacker stuff and, and, and the corners are going to have to step up with the depth there, the guys that we got. But I, I'm still, I, I want to pump the brakes after what happened last season because, right, this time last year I was all excited and everything that happened. But, you know, you look at the schedule, it's it's not very daunting. You get the first three at home, unlike Florida at the gate last year. Michigan State going through some turmoil, new coach, you know, don't know how they're going to be. So to me, there's no reason for to not win around nine games. All right. And I agree with you, brother. Um, and just one more question, man. Is there a player besides De'Ari King that you think um, that you're looking to improve in the spring? I know my guy, for example, would be Jeremiah Payton. I think he was an early rollie last year. He looked good in the spring game. Thought he would get some play time in the regular season, but really didn't. I think now is his opportunity with the wide receivers that we lost. Is there a guy that you're kind of looking at to make that next step during the spring? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I could go with a couple receivers, but actually I, I'd, I'll say Will Mallory because Brevin Jordan's my guy. He's my favorite player on the team, you know, great player. But you, we kept hearing about Will Mallory, Will Mallory. And during the season, he, you know, he had a couple moments here or there. But to me, he was he was a disappointment after all the hype and everything. I'm big on the tight end position. It's such a big mismatch. And, you know, it, it, with Jordan and Mallory, two tight ends set, I think that could be huge for this team over the middle and down the seam. So I, I'm hoping he can emerge. And now that he'll be a junior, kind of take that next step. And anyway, we got that two-headed monster at tight end. 